I think a rainy morning is a good morning to talk about safety because we have to be extra careful on the way to school. Our class is proud of knowing how to come to school safely. That's why Tom is concerned, because his friend Jerry isn't here yet. Why isn't Jerry in school? Do you suppose anything could have happened? Here's Jerry, a little wet, but safe and sound. Naturally, Tom wants to know what happened. But before Jerry can tell him, well, it seems that other people are thinking about safety, too. Andy saw something on the way to school this morning, and he wants to tell the class about it. There was a boy riding a bicycle who skidded on the wet street and fell off his bike and was nearly run over by a car. Well, now Jerry wants to tell the whole class why he was late. You see, Jerry was planning to ride his bike to school this morning, but his mother said it wouldn't be safe. Jerry didn't like that. He thought he'd be safe, and having to walk would make him late. But now Jerry agrees that it is better to walk when streets are slippery. He'll just have to leave home a little earlier, allow time to be safe. In our class, we like to feel that everyone knows how to come to school safely. This would be a good time to review what we know. First, let's think about the different ways we come to school. There's the school bus. How many of you come on the school bus? Raise your hands. How many of you come on the city bus? How many come in automobiles? How many walk? How many ride bicycles? Yes, there are many different ways of coming to school. But how do we come safely? That's what we want to know. This is Alice. Let's all pretend we're coming to school with her. We've left home in plenty of time. That's important, because when we have to hurry, we're apt to become careless about our safety habits. When we ride the school bus, we have to be on time. And while we're waiting, we talk to our friends, but we don't play shoving or running out in the street. We don't shove when we get on the bus, either. There's time enough for everyone. The driver and the bus patrol have a big responsibility. We cooperate with them by moving directly to our seats. We keep the aisle clear. Books and packages in our laps or under the seats. Heads and arms stay inside the bus, where they're safe. The driver may be a good friend, but driving safely requires his full attention, so we don't try to talk to him while the bus is in motion. And while we enjoy talking among ourselves, we keep our conversation quiet enough that we don't annoy each other and don't distract the driver. This is the way we ride on the school bus. Just by taking time to be safe, by following a few simple rules, and by being considerate of each other, we make the trip more fun every day. When we reach school, we stay in our seats till the bus stops. That's our final rule for safety in riding the school bus. And these same rules help us come to school safely on a city bus or streetcar. Riding to school in a car is something like riding in a school bus. Do you know how to be a safe rider? Keep your hands out of the way when you close the car door. Watch out for other people's hands, too. When you're riding, 
Keep your hands and head inside the car. And remember not to disturb the driver by jumping around or shouting. When the car stops, which side do you get out? Toward the curb or toward the street? The curb side is the safe side. Cross the street where there's a safety patrol or policeman on duty to help you stay safe. We've talked about safety when riding in a bus or car. What else can we do for safety on the way to school? Each of us has made a map to help choose the safest route to follow in coming to school. Let's look at Jerry's map. Here's home, a corner with traffic lights, a corner with safety patrols and a policeman. This is the route Jerry follows when he rides his bike to school. Carol's map helped her choose the safest way to walk to school with her young brother. What do you know about safety in walking to school? Let's see. When you walk, you are more responsible for your own safety than when you ride in a car or bus. Do you know the safe way to cross the street when there's no one there to help you? You stay on the sidewalk and look both ways and around the corner to make sure it's safe to cross. And then you cross, but you still keep alert. What about dogs or cats you meet on the street? You might like to play with them but it just isn't safe to play with animals that don't know you. You have to be very careful crossing railroad tracks. Cross only where there are gates or signals to warn you when a train is coming through. When the gates go up, it should be safe to cross but it's wise to look both ways, just in case. On the way to school, you may cross at some corners with the help of a policeman or school safety patrol. You obey them for your own safety. At other corners, there may be traffic lights. Would you know how to cross safely here? This is what you do. Look at the traffic light that is facing you. If the red light is on, just wait. The red light means stop. And don't start on the yellow light. Wait for the green light. Even then, don't cross until approaching cars have stopped. And keep watching for cars turning the corner. All drivers are not as polite as this one. Skating to school is very much like walking, but you can't stop as quickly, so you have to be even more careful. Jerry has learned to ride his bike only in good weather. He rides on the right side of the street. And he obeys the same rules that automobile drivers obey. When he gets to the school playground, he always walks his bike. Yes, Jerry knows the safe way to come to school on a bicycle. Do you? Do you know how to be a safe rider coming to school in a car? Do you know the rules for safety when you ride to school in a bus? Have you made a map? showing the safest route to walk to school? Have you ever made up a play about safety? That's what we're going to do now. Wouldn't you like to make up your own play about safety on the way to school?